Hey everybody and what's going on again, Keith Gebhardt here with LearnTechTraining.com and today we are going to talk about how to implement IoT devices within your Cisco Packet Tracer network environments so you can learn how to set up some awesome IoT things whether it's in your house or elsewhere. Now here looking at your screen you can see I simply just have a motion detector and a light. So if I actually put motion in front of this detector and we do this impact tracer by holding the alt key and dragging your mouse over it you can see the light just turned on so this is just like anything you would have in your house if you have a motion detector for a security system in your house and you walk in and it detects motion you could have that configured so the lights go on and then obviously we need to tell something to control something right so Think of it this way, the server is gonna be what we call a registration server. And that's gonna store all the configurations and recognize all these devices so it could take action when something happens. If this happens, then that's gonna happen. If this happens, or else if, if then, okay? That's basically all this is for any of you programmers out there. And in the next video I'm gonna put up, we're actually gonna program this using some blocky rather than a GUI as we are in here. But we need this registration server. Think of, um, the best thing I could relate this to is if you guys have an Alexa, an Amazon Alexa. I love Amazon Alexa, she's awesome, right? She knows of any devices that you have con connected to it, whether it's your Spotify apps, whether it's um, different uh, IoT light bulbs around your house. You program that within your Alexa application on your phone, and then Alexa stores that information. You know, it doesn't look like a server, it doesn't look like what's inside of Packet Tracer, but you need to you know, put these things into relative perspective, you know, something that you would experience or relate to in the real world. That's all that is. So this server, you know, even though it looks like a monstrosity and that's kind of something we would use in regular networking, it's just acting as a centralized location for it to know of different things and what to do with them. So that is what we're gonna build today. Let's get started. Open up a blank Cisco Packet Tracer Lab and we're gonna start off by grabbing a Cisco switch. I'm just gonna use a 2960, it does not matter. We do need that server. Again, even though it looks like a monstrosity, it's just a place so the other devices know what to do, right? So we're controlling those devices through the server. We can go down here to the little home icon, click that, and you'll notice there's a whole bunch of different IoT devices that we could utilize. Pick whatever you want or experiment with this after you're done following this tutorial because this will walk you through step by step. I'm gonna use the motion detector. Now you notice there's two very similar ones. If you look at the bottom corner down here, in this, oh, down here at the bottom of your screen, you'll notice those names change. So I'm using the motion detector, just so you guys don't get confused. And I'm also gonna do the light. Now a couple of things that I recommend you doing, and I always tell you guys this to name your things, something visually easy to represent as you're going through other configurations. It's more important now than ever because if you leave, if you, if, for example, if you're making a huge IoT lab where you have 10, 15 different devices in there, and you leave it all default where it just keeps adding a numeric value to the end of IOE in the name. Later when we're going to configure these within the server, it's just gonna list them as IOE one through whatever you have. So if we actually name these here, it'll help us later on significantly. So I'm gonna name him Motion, you know, <laughs> obviously. And what do you think I'm gonna name this guy? It's gonna be the light, so very simple. Now the server I could just name, he's gonna be We'll name him registration server, okay? Because that's what it is. And then I'm gonna take my little notepad here and we're gonna visually represent what the IP addresses are so we have a reference point later on. 172.16.4. and we can make him 10, just a standard class B IP address. 172.16.4.20, cider notation 16 for that guy. And for our light, we will use 172.16.4.30, cider notation of 16. So that's our topology. Now the only other thing we need to do is grab some cables. We could go to hit the connections tab and grab some straight through cables, fast ethernet to the switch. It does not matter where we're plugging into the switch because of the switch is simply just acting as a multiple connection point for us, almost like a hub. It's gonna be unmanaged. We're not doing any uh, Cisco switch configurations in this one. So now that we're all configured, or wired up rather, we need to start addressing our devices. Now for the server, it's just like you normally would. Let's go to desktop, IP configuration. He's gonna be 172.16.4.10. Tab that out and we're good. Before we get out of the registration server, I wanna go over to services, down to IOE, turn registration services on. And once that's good, we're done on the server for now. Let's go over to our motion device and in the top right corner here, or top left corner, this tab, config, click that. We're gonna go down to fast ethernet 
and here ip address okay now it starts off with the default gateway so don't mix those up but the second one down is going to be 172.16.4.20 tab that out and we are good let's go ahead and close this out let's go to the light again go to the, your configuration tab and go to fast ethernet and we're going to configure this guy 172.16.4.30 tab him out and he's good so let's go ahead and close that out now what we need to do is actually configure the registration server to be aware of these other devices. So if we go to the registration server and go into desktop and now we click the web browser, let's just type in the IP address of the actual registration server, which is going to be 172.16.4.10. Go ahead and click the enter key. Now it's asking for a registration server login credentials, which we don't know what those are, but we do see a little sign up now option. So go ahead and click that. My username is going to be admin to keep it simple and my password will be Cisco and I will create that. Now you can document this if you want, you know, you could say username is admin and uh, password will be Cisco just for future reference if you're following along and you want to visually see this. But while we're in here, you'll notice there are no devices. So what else do we need to do? Well, we need to tell these devices to recognize this registration server. So the first one we could go to is actually our motion detector here. And we're gonna go into, well, as soon as you click config, global settings, this is where we are right here. You can see global settings. And we're gonna click remote server. Simply type in that address, 172.16.4.10, right? And then username will be admin and password will be Cisco. And then we could click connect. Now, when this shows refresh, it is indeed connected. It's not gonna say connected or anything. It is connected as soon as it says refresh so we are good here let's go back to our light and i'm just going to move him over let's go down to remote server 172.16.4.10 yet again admin is our username and cisco is the password go ahead and click connect it says refresh and we are good now we need to go back to our registration server because right now even though we registered these for example you could see they are now on our web page right if i click motion you're going to see it's there you see the status for the light but as I showed you in the beginning, if I hover over the motion holding my alt key, the light on the motion detector turns red, meaning it recognized motion passing through it. But notice the, there's nothing turning on or happening with the light. That's because we need to tell these devices what to do when what happens, right? If this happens, then that needs to happen. So let's go ahead and click conditions in the registration server, and we're gonna add a condition. So we can name this, um, we could say light on, uh, light on. And then we could go to match all. And here's where I was telling you is very important to make sure you name, if anything else, at least name your IOE devices or IOT devices, your motions, your lights, your coffee pots, your thermostats, when you're building labs and packet tracer. Because this list, for example, say you have 10 or 15 different devices, this list will say IOE 1 through 15. And you try to make sense of all that. It'll drive you nuts. Name them, save yourself the hassle. So first of all, if motion is on, which is obviously we have true and false, is true, then what's going to happen? Then the light will change its status to become either dim or on. So we're just gonna say on to make things simple. Now we just click okay. But we also need to tell it what to do if there is no motion. So if we did it right now, the light would go on and probably just stay on. So we wanna add another statement and we'll say light off, match all, motion um, on is false because it's not saying motion's off. We're saying if motion detected is not true, then we want the light status to be off and click okay. So now that that's done, if I go ahead and just take my mouse, click or press and hold your alt key on your keyboard, hover over this, you'll notice the light does indeed come on. That's some pretty cool stuff. But you're also noticing how we just created a small script. This is scripting our devices, but we're using a simplified GUI to do so. In the next video I'm gonna put up, you're gonna learn how to do this using Blocky, which is kind of a JavaScript-based programming language that is excellent for learning how to do different IOE things, maybe some game development using Scratch, and I also introduce you to somebody that is a phenomenal professor, a phenomenal teacher with regards to programming. And he's got a whole YouTube channel. I'll introduce it into the next video. So if you're interested in Blocky or um, Scratch or any of the block paradigm of programming that you can do out there right now, 
Highly recommend you check out the next video. Highly recommend you check his video out. Highly recommend you subscribe to his channel and tell him I sent you. All right, guys, I will see you in the next one.